Good afternoon, all. And yesterday, I made a video to bridge the gap from part one misinterpretation of my autistic language and my being autistic. Well, in, in the words of the Florida Supreme Court's task force, number one, that made the finding that they cannot count up federal cases to place somebody on Florida's autism segregation vexatious list on the words of Florida's statute itself, Florida Statute 68.093, that you can't count cases that are not finally and adversely decided, like two cases that a bankruptcy court ordered I could take forward to get a refund of property taxes I paid for someone else's mobile home. I mean, why am I paying property taxes on someone else's mobile home? I deserve a refund, so okay. This video is going to start to get into these attitudinal barriers existing in the Florida state court system, as well as indications that associates of the individual who violently raped me are involved in this little rogue band of Florida law clerks, lawyers, and other law clerks, and that they have these attitudinal barriers and that they actually hunt down ex parte autistic people they want to put on Florida's autism segregation vexatious list. And we're going to start with an experience that happened to me in around 2003 to 2004. And again, uh, the same band popped their heads up in around 2013, 14-ish. And they jump from internet forum to internet forum, hunting down and harassing autistic people. So we're going to get into this because this courthouse grapevine is very, very real. And particularly in the context of autistic adults and their civil rights and their right to access to the courts. So now we're going to start with what is an attitudinal barrier. An attitudinal barrier is a behavior perception or assumption that discriminates against people with disabilities. Attitudinal barriers can be unconscious biases or unintentional preferences that can limit a person's potential. They can stem from a lack of understanding, fear, ignorance, or low expectations. Some examples of attitudinal barriers include inferiority. Some people believe that people with disabilities are second-class citizens. Pity. People feel sorry for people with disabilities, which can lead to patronizing attitudes. Stereotypes. People may have stereotypes or biases against people with disabilities. Attitudinal barriers can occur in many areas of life, including school, work, and social activities, and also in the state courts that are actually defined as Title II public entities under Title II of the Americans with Disabilities Act. They can lead to illegal discrimination, to Promote an inclusive culture, it's important to challenge these biases. And right here you see that these are the same rogue group of law, law clerks and Florida lawyers and judges. They're harassing me on the internet every day and they interfere with any court case I bring. They're hacking my computer and they won't stop and that's there they are. In addition, an attitudinal barrier can be an unconscious bias or unintentional preference for someone who does not have a disability, even if the person with a disability is fully qualified. In other words, an attitudinal barrier can be ableist. So what is ableism? Well, 
Ableism is a system of discrimination and prejudice against people with disabilities that assumes they are inferior to non-disabled people. It can be conscious or unconscious, and it can occur in many forms, including social interactions. Ableism can occur between individuals or between individuals and organizations. Social norms. Ableism can be part of social norms, expectations, and policies. Institutions. Ableism can be embedded in institutions and systems. Ableism can take many forms, including assuming that people with disabilities are less worthy of respect or consideration, assuming that people with disabilities are less able to contribute or participate, assuming that people with disabilities are less valuable than others, assuming that people with disabilities require fixing, assuming that typical abilities are superior, Assuming that disabled people should have less personal autonomy than others. That was from AI on Google. Also, um, Oxford Language Dictionary uh, definition of ableism is discrimination in favor of able-bodied people. A person with a disability can struggle with ableism. Okay, so to begin with, I'm going to show an example of ableism, which is an attitudinal barrier that violates Title II of the American with Disabilities Act and has personally violated my rights on an ongoing and continuing basis to the present day. These are the Florida State Court System's Title II American with Disabilities Act guidelines. And here... We focused on the ableist word courtesies. And in particular, in an autistic context, because I am autistic. Here it says, courtesies for interacting with persons who have disabilities. Courtesies. Among these courtesies are... Title II ADA reasonable accommodations provided by the courts, including effective communication. And these are the Florida State Court System's Title II American with Disabilities Act guidelines. Oh. Is effective communication to interact with an autistic person a courtesy? Is that a courtesy? Well, the Florida State Court System's Title II American with Disabilities Act guidelines are educating all of the Florida State Court judges and all licensed Florida attorneys to understand and believe that the Title II American with Disabilities Act right to effective communication, which incidentally is enforcing the First Amendment to the United States Constitution, is a courtesy. It's just a mere courtesy. And But it's not a courtesy. How do we know that? Because one of the Attorney General's Regulations implementing the, the anti-discrimination mandates of Title II of the ADA uses the word shall. This is 28 CFR 35.160A. A public entity that is the Florida State Courts and each separate court, including the Florida Supreme Court, shall take, shall take, not only if the autistic person has the social cognition to be courteous. It says a public entity shall take appropriate steps to ensure that communications with applicants, part participants, members of the public, and companions with disabilities are as effective as communications with others. B, a public entity shall, we have the shall word here, shall. That means it's an entitlement for the autistic person, not a social courtesy only if the autistic person has a social brain 
and can act in a manner perceived by judges and lawyers as being courteous. A public entity shall furnish appropriate auxiliary aids and services where necessary to afford individuals with disabilities, including applicants, participants, companions, and members of the public, an equal opportunity to participate in and enjoy the benefits of a service program or activity of a public entity. And C, a prohibition. A public entity shall not, shall not, require an individual with a disability to bring another individual to interpret for him or her. A public entity shall not rely on an adult accompanying an individual with a disability to interpret or facilitate communication. Okay, so what's going on here? Why is there a difference between the Attorney General's Title II ADA regulation, 28 CFR 35.160, with shall, shall, and shall not language versus the Florida State Court System's Title II ADA guidelines word courtesies. Courtesies. Well, Courtesy is a totally different word than shall and shall not. What's going on is the Florida State Court System decided that it doesn't want to follow the ADA. It decided that it only wants to give an ADA reasonable accommodation to an autistic person with where... An impairment in social interaction, social communication, and social cognition itself is a key characteristic and an immutable characteristic and part of the disability of being autistic. They decided, oh no, we're going, the word courtesy, courtesies, courtesies, courtesy, is ableism. It is the Florida State Court System's distortion of the Title II ADA Regulation 28 CFR Section 35.160 and also replacement of that regulation by imposing a social discrimination condition precedent on the autistic person to have to mask and be indistinguishable from a neurotypical normal person by showing a social cognition characteristic the autistic person first of all it may not even occur to the autistic person because the autistic person doesn't have the social cognition. The autistic person has a different brain. The autistic person may not be able to identify how to get the neurotypical person to perceive what they're saying as being courteous. May not know when to use the social concept of courtesy. It's part of social neurotypical language. And even if the autistic person tries, the autistic person may be perceived by the neurotypical person as coming across as not being courteous. And so this is these Title II ADA guidelines written by Debbie Howells and approved by the Chief Justice of the Florida Supreme Court in administrative and co official capacity. They are ableist. <laughs> They contain social discrimination against autistic people that lead to evading the enforceability of Title II of the ADA within the Florida state court system. Plain and simple. It's also an attitudinal barrier. And it matters. Why? We know that the First Amendment protects artistic expression. 
And that would be the artist. You, you could have 10 people and tell them to paint a picture of the Sistine Chapel and give them all the paint and the paintbrushes and tell them they can paint it any way that they want in their own style of expression. And you'll come up with 10 different artistic ways in which they express themselves through an artistic medium. Well, the same happens with autistic communication, speech, and language. An autistic person's way of saying something is autistic expression. And it's just as much autistic expression as it is artistic expression. And it is protected by the First Amendment. You can't just take a whole minority class of people, autistic people, and say, the way you communicate is not protected by the First Amendment. Because if you did that, you'd violate the Equal Protection Clause, for example. And I know this because it pertains to me. And how do I know it pertains to me? Because we're going to get into what happened when I was just simply pursuing my special interest horse obsession and went over to the Chronicle of the Horses Internet Forums a bulletin board to talk about my special interest horses. And when I did, all of a sudden I was stalked there by people identifying themselves as lawyers, some of them Florida lawyers, other lawyers, and one that told me that you don't know who you're talking to. And why would a rogue band, a rogue band of neurotypical lawyers, Florida bar members, Florida lawyers and judges and other lawyers, maybe from out of state law clerks, be stalking me as an autistic person, just talking about my special interest horses and on a horse internet bulletin board. Why? Well, we know one reason why is because they gave out my address and email in violation of my victim rights. See my rape victim video, a previous video on my channel. We know they did that and that they're stalking me. And we do have some indication by another post they made on the internet that in their little rogue band, maybe associates of the rapist who raped me, violating my victim rights. But let's get into it. What is the Chronicle of the Horse? The Chronicle of the Horse is a weekly equestrian magazine and website that covers the sport horse world. It covers a variety of equestrian disciplines, including dressage, eventing, fox hunting, hunters and jumpers, and steeplechase racing. It offers in-depth profiles, health and horse training tips, and a monthly calendar of events. And it has a podcast with stories about the past and present of the sport horse world. This, this is the chronicle of the horse, right here. It's all about horses. You don't see that it's about Florida bar members, lawyers, Florida courts, or anything like that. So, what was this little band, rogue band, of... Florida bar members, lawyers, Florida judge, um, law clerks, and so on and so forth, doing, stalking me as an autistic person, talking about my special interest, horses and ponies and, and hunter-jumper riders, to horse internet forums. Uh, what's that about? Well... See my last video on the courthouse grapevine and how it can negatively affect autistic litigants and cause them to lose their cases. So, this band of, I'll call them rogue Florida lawyers, law clerk, judge, followed me onto a horse internet forum and started talking about experience experiencing and perceiving my autistic communication language and speech 
And what they had to say is really important given the attitudinal ableist barriers that are existing in the Florida bar, the Florida courts, and in this autism segregation vexatious statute, the task forces, they're wanting to expand it with lifetime court access ban and no way off. And the gem that what it amounts to, the reason they're doing this to autistic litigants is it's not the content of what you say. It's the way you say it. Well, now, so this so-called, you know, in a couple cases, uh, Florida was sued by people put on their vexatious litigant list. And so the Florida would get the attorney general of the state of Florida to represent them. And then the attorney general of the state of Florida would make the representation to the court deciding these cases uh, challenging the vexatious litigant statute that the state of Florida has a compelling state interest in stopping vexatious litigation. Uh, and so the statute is, uh, is constitutional. Well, what is vexatious litigation? It is when... Lawyers, neurotypical lawyers and neurotypical judges decide that a claim brought by a litigant is frivolous, which then defines it as vexatious, and uh, that it lacks any validity or merit. But if this rogue band of lawyers stalking an autistic person the gem they're admitting and confessing is that it's not about the content of what the autistic person says, then that's a confess-all that it's not that the autistic person's case is frivolous or vexatious or invalid or lacks merit. What they're saying, the gem of what they're saying is it's about the way the autistic person says it. So that is why they are putting autistic people on this autistic segregation vexatious list to impose a court access ban. So let's let's get into more of this. Now, here is the ableist attitudinal barrier underlying why these Florida Bar members, law clerks, and judge are stalking me when I'm autistic, and the real reason Florida has enacted is now wants to expand their autism segregation vexatious list. This is an actual post the same rogue band made on another internet forum. I'm not misbehaving. I have autism. Please be understanding. Autism hate thread. I give you Frank, that's David Frank Petrano, and Mary Catherine Day Petrano, two batshit insane autistics who are a Lutz goldmine. That was posted on this internet forum here. As I said, the same rogue band is jumping from internet forum to internet forum. They have stalked me in numerous places, uh, including the VolokConspiracy.com blog, Paterico.com. Uh, even some of them went on to former Seventh Circuit U.S. Court of Appeal Judge Richard Posner's blog. They've stalked me to Prof's Brawl uh, forum. These are all legal forums. They stalked me to the Chronicle of the Horse. They've stalked me to these other other forums, and there's no question in in my mind from what I see that all the shootings around our property, the hacking of my computer that's been going on since well before 2013 that has impacted all my lawsuits because when they're hacking you. 
and they delete a final a lawsuit complaint and then reimpose a work in progress you're going to get sanctioned so these these are hate crimes why do we know they're hate crimes they're coming from this road rope pant of uh, endogenously neurotypical florida bar members law clerks other law clerks so um and they're getting away with this and they're the same ones who are the proponents and uh jumping on the bandwagon of using, naming people to, and wanting to expand Florida's autism segregation vexatious list. Because why? They don't believe autism is real. Okay, now, this post was posted to one of my YouTube videos. And it says, hello, I'm Carl Schweit, and... I think you're an effing crazy piece of SH. P.S. Autism isn't real. Who is Carl Schweit? Well, he was on the disciplinary committee for the 8th Judicial Circuit of Florida at the time disbarment proceedings were initiated against my husband, David Frank Petrano. And he was the co-chair of the Florida Bar's Disciplinary Committee. So, you know. And this little rogue group of law clerks, Florida Bar members, uh, law clerks from out of state, and that are stalking me from forum to forum, are also saying that using the words rape. So I have every reason to believe that this little rogue band of Florida bar members, law clerks, law clerks from out of state, and who are homogeneously neurotypical, who are obviously stalking me from internet forum to internet forum, are involved with associates of the individual who violently raped me. They also admitting that they're giving out my address, which I will get to in my next video. Um, but I'm addressing this part first because it's about the way the autistic person says it, not the content of what the autistic person says, that is upsetting, upsetting, these homogenous neurotypical learned profession, licensed lawyers, law clerks from in and out of the state of Florida and causing them to stalk me onto internet forum to internet forum and through the courthouse grapevine to irreparably prejudice my cases in every court I'm in so that I lose them. And then we'll get to yet another video in the future about how Florida's autism segregation vexatious statute is using a 4x4 four four rule, uh, or 5x5 five five actually, since they count five cases, uh, rule as a proxy for autistic disability to place autistic people on this autism segregation vexatious list. This band of law clerks, Florida bar members, lawyers, law clerks, that has been stalking me and has irreparably prejudiced every case I've, I've been in uh, going back to before 2013 into 2012-ish or so. So they were hacking me, irreparably prejudiced my case, Petranos versus uh, Old Republic slash Nationwide. Uh, three cases assigned to the Honorable Monica Brasington Circuit Judge. Um, just a whole slew of my cases, like every case. And one more thing they did was because I have Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry, they posted this post here 
showing a swat. That's my face. Showing double horns, 666 on my forehead, the star of Israel, and a swastika. Okay? And when I alleged in my complaint in Petrano's B Old Republic slash Nationwide that I am autistic and I was being bullied and my family was being bullied. Um, and this, all this was actually happening. I had all these posts in hand and I have confessions on some of the blog posts that they are Florida bar members. They are Florida lawyers. They are law clerks assigned, some of them assigned in the courts. When I alleged to the Honorable Gary R. Jones and the Honorable M. Casey Rogers, district judge, that I was being bullied in this way, they said it was frivolous, it was vexatious, and it was delusional. And they failed to protect me as an autistic adult. So they really failed autism. Now, what is upsetting them so much? What is upsetting this homogeneously neurotypical rogue band of Florida bar members, lawyers, law clerks, uh, in and out of the state of Florida? And what's upsetting them so much? Well, besides the attitudinal barriers that I've already explained, the expression here, I can't stand how people with disabilities believe they have a right to have other people foot the bill for whatever accommodations they deem necessary in order to live. So the motivating factor for this, and it's the motivating factor ultimately because it's the same people that are involved in pushing Florida's autism segregation vexatious list, court ban, the motivating factor is, first of all, they don't think autism is real. And they think that someone neurotypicals perceive as misbehaving, which can be as little as the autistic person is not able to mask to be indistinguishable as a neurotypical, is that I ain't misbehaving, I'm autistic. And the motivating factor is they don't like having to provide Title II ADA accommodations to autistic people, especially within the Florida state courts and court cases. It's a massive wall of resistance, as Thurgood Marshall said, about trying to get the bar admission of Virgil Hawkins. It is a massive anti-American with Disabilities Act rogue band of Florida bar lawyers, law clerks, and law clerks in and out of the courts. And it's coming from neurotypical homogeneity of the neurotypical majority that dominates all of the courts within the state of Florida and the Florida bar. And now, I'm not Congress. I'm not the one that passed the American with Disabilities Act. And I'm not Herbert Walker Bush, who signed the Americans with Disabilities Act into law and called it the Emancipation Proclamation for Individuals with Disabilities. I'm not the one who did that. Okay? But I'm being blamed because that was done because I'm autistic, because I need reasonable accommodations under that civil rights law. That's why I'm being stalked. That's why I'm being blamed. That's why I'm losing my cases. And that's why I have been stalked and hunted down from internet forum to internet forum and in order to place me on this autism segregation vexatious list. So this rogue group of courthouse grapevine people, Florida bar lawyers, law clerks in and out of, of the state of Florida who has stalked me from internet forum to internet forum because I'm autistic. I'm not going to be putting these comments in any particular order. I'm just going to go over some of them. But these are the ways 
even through writing on an internet forum, that they are perceiving my autistic communication. B calls one of them to task and says, the bottom line seems to be that you and others feel that because cello's pride, CP, that is me, that's um, the ID I was posting under the name of my autism horse, can write and use a computer. She can control all aspects of her behavior. I say again, I'm just not sure if that's the case. B also says to a poster named Spot, included in some people's situation is the inability to recognize their own issues and therefore explain them correctly to others. In effect, they can't give a heads up. Hence, as you said, the dilemma. In this situation, I just feel I'm not equipped to make the judgment call you mentioned. And again, B. Yes. If that's me, CP, posted in a different way, I don't think this would have happened. I'm feeling a little alone in believing it's possible. She just can't. TSWJB said, why is everyone picking on Cello's pride? That's me. She just stated her opinion. That doesn't make her a troll. Disabled people do have to overcome more than other people. So maybe it wouldn't be fair if she got an advantage to lunge her horse, but that is just what she thought would be correct. It's just an opinion. So we can get see that we're getting into it's the way as an autistic person I say it, not the content of what I say. And autistic language communication is what it is. We have a different brain. We lack the social cognition language component. That's known as a theory of mind impairment, among other things. And this irritates neurotypical people, including people who are deciding our cases in the Florida courts. Texas says, I am completely appalled by the behavior on this board. How did a topic innocently dis started by a disabled poster go for 10 long pages of largely hatred-filled filth against that person? That so many of you have this much bile in their system goes a long way to explaining the lowly status of horse sports. Courts said, this thread has become a train wreck. I don't know a ton about autism, but I have read a little about it. And one of the traits of an autistic person is an inability to interact normally with other people. It is as if the person with autism has absolutely zero social skills. Autistic people behave in a spectrum that runs from merely odd to seemingly downright rude. Intelligence and social IQ, if you will, are not related. People with autism can be highly intelligent. It is likely that CPs, that's me, autism is responsible for, and here's the neurotypical perception of the way in which autistic people say it, for her seemingly arrogant, self-centered attitude and lengthy diatribes. The fact is she likely doesn't even realize that she is perceived as a self-aggrandizing blowhard. That doesn't make the situation any more pleasant for us who get to deal with her, but perhaps it does explain things. Autism is a very strange disorder. And that's courts. The comment, those of us who get to deal with her, is indicating that that person is very likely one of the rogue Florida bar members or judges, Florida judges or law clerks, uh, in and out of the state of Florida within the courthouse grapevine. This is Ishmael. Just my two cents. I think this thread has progressed to a point where perhaps it's not in good taste to speculate any further about CP and her past. Uh, yeah, that's we're referring to my uh, being a rape victim. It's especially rude to write these things that could be hurtful as if CP couldn't read them. And CP... Trailblazer says... Finally, am I the only one who doesn't think CP should have been given extra time to do her lawyer stuff? This is the real world. I would be really PO'd if my trial were delayed because someone felt they were owed an extension. Ask for an extension if you want to, but quite frankly, I don't blame the courts for not giving you one. 
more trailblazer. If CP is really autistic, then she's going to have to make the best of her bad situation. This will involve trying to adjust to the real world as best as she can. Unfortunately, we are not all going to roll over and agree with her. I simply cannot have compassion for people who don't try. J.A. Gold I appreciate the perspective that you bring to this discussion. However, I wonder if it is really reasonable to expect posters on an essentially anonymous internet, internet BB to have positive interactions with an autistic person. It is not possible to distinguish between someone who is trolling and someone who is disabled based on posted messages. Even when someone makes clear the nature of his or her disability, if that disability leads to unpleasant interactions with other people, is it really the responsibility of other BB posters to make friends? I'm asking this seriously. I suppose in an ideal world, we would all be compassionate, if not all-knowing. And we would simply ignore disruptive posts rather than attack the poster. But I'm not sure that level of restraint is reasonable, particularly when the disruptive posts are not new topics, but rather interruptions of other discussions. While an infant shouldn't be derided for crying in a restaurant, other patrons can't be expected to welcome the babe with open arms. Albion. What's to like? You're nasty, rude, condescending, and you bring up ADA stuff at every turn, no matter what the subject. Guess what? No matter how much society tries to equalize things, the playing field is never level. Everyone is handicapped by something, whether it be a physical or mental handicap or something having to do with class, monetary, gender, race, education issues, and so forth. Everyone is lacking in some area or another. Nothing can entirely level the playing field for everyone. The only thing I am familiar with in the ADA are the rules concerning renovations to old houses open to the public. To scream discrimination at every turn when people find you to be a rude person and can't agree with what you have to say, regardless of what handicaps you may have, is simply ridiculous and an insult to the multitudes of disabled people who deal with their issues with some modicum of great. More from Albion. I guess what this issue is for me, and this is one thing that really drives me crazy in real life, is that I hate to see people blaming whatever shortcomings in life they may face on anything and everything but themselves. It's people that think that suing anyone and everything is the answer to every problem. I have seen so many frivolous EEO complaints filed, usually resulting in someone having to be the scapegoat and the fall person resulting in the loss of a job career because people, a lot of people, want to scream discrimination at every turn. I don't deny that there are disabilities and circumstances that are very difficult to overcome, but it can be done. I am a pretty average middle class white girl. Witch. Celtic witch. I am confused here. Your son notices if children tease him but wouldn't know if someone meant if they gave him the finger and rudely told him to have a nice day. This is the part of the diagnosis which confuses me. To my mind, you can't have it both ways. Either a specific person is or isn't capable of functioning socially to whatever level for that individual. I do not understand how the level of function and understanding can be completely changed to suit. Or does his level of social functioning change day to day as part of the illness? I know that it does with my grandfather's Alzheimer's and wonder if autism is similar. Celtic witch. Concessions to pass the bar are one thing. But why on earth should you be given concessions to practice law that are not given to every lawyer? Would that not open the door to stacking the deck in favor of the disabled? That is a right not granted by either civil rights nor your precious ADA. And then this one looks like this one might be one of the judges that has stuck to me. Is responding to my posts. Now, as far as being unfairly picked on on this thread by a bunch of bullies because of the nature of my communication disabilities and being called a Nigerian scam artist and a fraud in light of all my medical documentation and being ridiculed and humiliated because of my disabilities, I am quite certain that I will take this into a federal court with my medical documentation and present this thread and how I have been treated there to a court and see what a real judge thinks about this. And then I got a scathing response. Cello's pride. 
in the event that you are not blowing smoke or whatever else you blow and that you will file an action in federal court based on these posts, may I remind you of Federal Rules Civil Procedure 11. In the event that neither you nor your husband own a copy of the rules, I have reprinted the relevant part below. I highly doubt whether your disability will be considered a defense to the filing of a frivolous complaint. There you have it on that post that you've got someone who is presenting themselves through their anonymous ID like they might be one of the Florida judges who have stalked me. Um, you have them making a threat against me that they will sanction me under Rule 11. If I bring any kind of a complaint complaining that I'm autistic and I'm being bullied. And this same guy here is admitting that he is one who has practiced law in federal and various state courts for over 20 years. So, this person is coming across, to begin with, I will sanction you under Rule 11, as if they are a judge, a Florida judge, and then admits that if they're not a Florida judge, or even if they are, because they would have practiced law first, that they are a Florida bar member who has practiced law for over 20 years in federal and state courts. Now... A, a licensed lawyer stalking me with my special horse interest being autistic on, on a horse internet forum. What's that about? And then we have this one, Moat House. Now, at this time, my husband and I were living on the Canandaigua, our sailboat, okay? And another thread I will talk about in my next video, actually, they say they're stalking me across the state lines into Florida to find the address and location of where I live on the sailboat. So what this person is saying is suggesting that they are part of this rogue group of Florida bar members, law clerks, in and out of the state of Florida, who are involved in the threat I will address in my next video, who actually did stalk me, they say they actually did stalk me, to where I live on the sailboat. And this is all remembering, they gave out my address and my email to allow this violent rapist and his associates to find me in violation of my California victim rights. But let's, let's, let's look at what this person says. Moat House. Cello's pride. Your sails are luffing. Better pull in your lines and don't bother to hoist your jib because you made it past the first buoy. Ready about. Hard to lee. You best stay below the decks because me thinks your main sail can't hoist to the top. And you definitely do not have both oars in the water. Better put on your life jacket along with flame suit. So there are numerous indications that run with commonality through all this jumping from internet forum to internet forum of this rogue group of courthouse grapevine, Florida bar members, lawyers, law clerks in and out of the state of Florida who are stalking me and they are bashing my being autistic, expressing attitudinal barriers toward Title II of the ADA, and exhibiting that they may not know enough about autistic people, but yet they're sitting here willing to tell me I do not deserve Title II ADA accommodations for being autistic. And then Moat House says to me, Moat House says to me, do not presume to know anything about me. You cannot prove. That's the language of a lawyer or a judge cannot prove. But said, CP was never not one time mean to anybody. Now, here's another poster, 
And the language used by this poster is almost identical to the language used by a poster that hop, hopped internet forums in a video I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Riley. Arg! Why am I posting this? Somebody please shoot me. I can't resist reading these insane posts. And they just make me want to, here it comes, stick Forks in my eyeballs. Because this, this is a phrase that's used in the internet hop to the other forum. It's a vicious cycle. I must read. I must drive myself crazy. Surely that has to qualify me as a disability in someone's book. These are all posted in 2004. And then Riley says, I have a rare disability called brains. That makes it impossible for me to understand why the ADA doesn't apply to me. And that one is directly mocking my being autistic and saying the ADA would not apply to an autistic person like me. And and then now I'm being told by this rogue courthouse grapevine group that uh, being autistic is not being truly disabled. Pony breath. Dear Cello's Pride, in the interest of those who are truly disabled, would you please quit attempting rather unsuccessfully to bend the definition of disability? Those who are truly disabled need the accommodations which have been made and are within reason. However, it is people like yourself who cause roadblocks. For those of us who are disabled, we simply wish to have fun with our horses. We didn't want special treatment. You just get over the fact there might be a few bumps in your path, whatever, wherever it may lead, that you may have to conquer on your own. You know, anybody can watch these videos being put out by actually autistic adults on YouTube. And there's a number of them that talk about reasonable accommodations for autistic people. So, I mean, this is a real attitudinal barrier to yeah, courthouse people, neurotypical people in our courthouses that lead to autistic people losing their cases and why autistic people are losing their cases only to be counted up with the four by four rule of the number of lost cases to be put on Florida's autism segregation vexatious list and banned from all court access. But but this is what you're getting out of these rogue group of Florida bar members and lawyers who are jumping internet forum to internet forum and posting these hateful comments to me as an autistic adult. And now here's one by someone calling themselves Silk. And this one starts to bring up the Florida State Court's Title II ADA guidelines courtesy social requirement that they are distorting the Title II ADA effective communication regulation with. The idea of ask nicely, have a social brain, have courtesy. And this is just autism discrimination. And it's apparent that this rogue group of Florida bar members and law clerks in and out of the state of Florida who are part of the courthouse grapevine, that they don't have a very good educational understanding of the requirements of Title II of the Americans with Disabilities Act or what being autistic means. Silk. Seriously, CP, you are a real pain in the A-S. I am truly disabled and you embarrass me. I am... Disabled, I am pretty convinced you couldn't do what I do if you had to deal with what I deal with, with a disability. Now, please shut up and leave us truly disabled individuals alone. The laws work for me. And then something about requesting special things, I have never been turned down, but I don't march in with something on my shoulders. Um, I always get to let... My disabled eyes adjust when showing indoors. 
and I nicely explain one of my disabilities, and I'm always allowed accommodation. Now, again, shut up and go away. I am sick of you. So, I dislike you because you are a pain in the Something the ones who request accommodation nicely, a bad name. So this is the condition precedent to an autistic person's ability to get a Title II ADA accommodation that the Florida State Court System is imposing on the ADA accommodations request. That the person must have to be indistinguishable from a neurotypical and have a social brain and be able to understand all the social nuances and know how to courteously ask nicely for the accommodation. But I don't know when to do that and how to do that. I'm autistic. I have a different brain. I'm not neurotypical. And so why are is the state of Florida putting some some condition precedent of having a social cognition on the right of an autistic person to be able to access an ADA reasonable accommodation the person needs to access the Florida state court system? I don't know. In the face of these uh, comments being made to me, uh, because I'm autistic, and this little courthouse grapevine group of, obviously, lawyers. One says he was a lawyer, okay? And I'm being threatened with Rule 11. They don't like my autistic communication. They're not understanding my being autistic. I can't even... Uh, participate in my special interest, which is horses and ponies, and go to a uh, horse internet forum without being stalked there by a bunch of courthouse grapevine Florida lawyers and law clerks from in and out the state of Florida, and then being attacked and harassed, and all this stuff that I presented in this video, and hopping from one forum to another, and even Putting a picture of me there with swastikas put on my face. I mean, you know, this is just hate. And then they're wondering why, with their attitudinal barriers, doing this to an autistic person. And these are the courthouse people in the courthouse grapevine. And and then the autistic person and, and their family members are losing their cases because of this kind of bias and prejudice and hate, these attitudinal barriers that they really have that they're using to prejudice the autistic person case in the court while they're going outside of the court and engaging in ex parte communication about that person. Um, and then and then they're counting up lost cases to put an autistic person on Florida's autism segregation vexatious list and the florida supreme court's task force is not even studying this i mean this is just they're really failing autism this is really unacceptable and florida's autism segregation vexatious list when you look at this is unconstitutional and they can't really say otherwise you can't with a, around a 94% bullying rate of autistic people, including autistic adults, and judges that and magistrates that really are exhibiting by what they say and the way they react that they have, like, almost no autism educational training or knowledge to call that delusional or frivolous. I mean, you really have a broken system. It's homogeneously neurotypical. And it's a broken system. And it's only allowing the viewpoint of the majoritarian, homogenous, neurotypical court people. And it's excluding the autistic experiences and viewpoint. This is really, really wrong. And somebody needs to say so. Now, when I was being attacked on the Chronicle of the Horse internet forums by this little rogue band of Florida lawyers 
Florida bar members and law clerks in and out of the state of Florida. Um, someone who did have some autism knowledge and experience, NHWR, posted some comebacks to these people. For example, let's look at what NHWR had to say. As the mother of a high-functioning child on the autistic spectrum, parts of this thread really sadden me. It is really tough to see how us neurotypicals interact with high-functioning people on the spectrum sometimes. I see this with my son a lot. It is heartbreaking to watch. High-functioning autism is primarily a communication and social disability. Hello. Think about that a bit before you go after Cello's Pride, you guys. And I'm Cello's Pride. Autistics don't see the world the way most of us do, but they frequently have insights into things that the rest of us never could come up with. They have a lot to contribute if we can only listen. And NHWR also says, I don't know if CP is autistic, but her behavior is consistent with someone who is, in my experience. It is the frustrating thing about autism that we perceive their behavior in a way that they usually don't intend. Pyramid. If CP is autistic, she most likely isn't picking any battle. She is being who she is. My son used to go on and on about Star Trek until I explained that he spoke about it so much it made it hard for people to be his friend. Here is how I think about that. People with autism perseverate. Anxiety makes this tendency worse. Social situations can be very anxiety producing. See the problem? It doesn't surprise me that a high functioning autistic would be interested in law. Highly ordered environments with lots of structure are what autistics deal with best. And then responding and HWR responding to Celtic Witch, who has been uh, promoting the Florida State Court System's uh, condition precedent of courtesy imposed on when they're going to provide an ADA reasonable accommodation to an autistic person. And that is, as Celtic Witch says, there is nothing complex about common politeness. Nothing. If you are highly intelligent, you can master the same common courtesies. There's the word courtesies. My three-year-old son shows. I don't care what disability is diagnosed. Courtesies, that's using the word and the term of art of the Florida State Court System. And this is indicating that this Celtic Witch is one of these Florida Bar lawyers or a Florida state judge, or law clerks uh, in Florida or out of Florida for the Florida state courts. Um, and NHWR says wrong. Actually, social behavior and common politeness depend on intricate neurological functioning. The ability to determine how a person is feeling from looking at their face. The ability to think abstractly and the ability to acquire information by inference. Most autistics lack these abilities. This has been demonstrated by PET scans. Social behavior is highly complex and depends on neurological resources that autistics just don't have. There are some researchers in autism and child development who believe it is possible to diagnose children as early as nine months old. The means, Celtic witch, that a neural typical three-year-old is light years ahead of the average autistic socially. In my experience, this is true. A common feature of autism is the ability to look at, recognize, and read facial expressions. There was an interesting study done at Yale about two years ago showing that autistic look at people's mouths when they are talking instead of making eye contact. This is common in autistics, so they miss most of the information communicated by facial expressions. They also don't read body language very well because that is pretty abstract, so they miss most of what we communicate. Imagine someone being really upset with you and flipping you off while sarcastically saying, have a nice day. An autistic would take that as an apology. I have noticed that my son does watch my mouth when I'm speaking, and I asked him about that. He said, well, that is where your words are coming from. Autistics tend to be very literal. They simply don't have access to the information needed to read other people and lack the understanding of what to do even if they could. 
NHWR goes on. Despite your experience with mental illness, Celtic Witch, you don't display much understanding of autism. It is a spectrum disorder, meaning that people who suffer from it can be completely nonverbal and unreachable, or they can be highly intelligent, verbal, and socially clueless like Einstein or Bill Gates. Of course, they will all be different. My son is rather high-functioning. He does notice when kids tease and antagonize him. He would certainly be aware of the ill treatment CP received were he in her shoes. What I see is the implication that autism is not a real disorder. After all, it wasn't for your brother and the classic one of my best friends is justification for an intractable attitude. And so we see this common theme with Celtic Witch, the poster Celtic Witch, about that we see that jump to the other thread, autism is not real. This is the same group, rogue group of ableist Florida bar members, law clerks in and out of the state of Florida that are working in Florida, probably mostly, and courthouse people who are part of the courthouse grapevine. It's clear that these people encountered me somehow, somewhere, maybe from one of my cases and found out I was autistic or I told them I was autistic and asked for reasonable accommodations. And that's when they went completely nuts and got really upset and started attacking me and punishing me and threatening to sanction me under Rule 11. And as we will see in my video tomorrow, they actually indicate and suggest they can influence a circuit judge to put an autism segregation vexatious order on me and on my husband. So this is a rogue group. This is prohibited ex parte communication that's being piped through a courthouse grapevine into my cases to affect their outcomes so I will lose them. And so this is really important because I'm not quite done yet about the ultimate gem from all this, but it's really important because John Tomasino, the clerk of the Florida Supreme Court who maintains this registry, and the chief justice of the Florida Supreme Court in his administrative and official capacity, and his two vexatious litigant work groups have not studied, reviewed, or addressed, addressed any of this that's happening. And it's really clear they can't regulate themselves or they're not willing to do so. And they don't care if there are autistic people who are victims of this. They don't care. And you get from that, that's because they have this attitude, an attitudinal barrier, an ableist one, that we are broken people. And that we are invalid and second-class citizens and we are undeserving. There isn't any other way you could look at it. B responded to Aaron's question, wouldn't a high-functioning autistic be aware of what their own autistic tendencies are even though they might not be able to stop or control them? And B says, no, in my experience, a high-functioning, depending on what our definition of high-functioning is, Autistic may not be aware of their own autistic tendencies. NHWR spoke to this issue when she described the socialization of her son. He has been taught to shake hands with people when he meets them. Probably he doesn't understand why he needs to shake hands. As evidenced by his inability to judge it's not necessary with his peers, he simply knows he is supposed to shake hands. And therefore, the sad thing to me is the possibility that the poster, they, that's me, CP, who said this proves people are prejudiced against people with disabilities, might be right. Prejudice arises from a lack of understanding. We are suffering from a lack of information leading us to a lack of understanding leading to prejudice. Are you saying it is okay to attack someone because you don't like the way they communicate? I have a problem with this. Seriously, how has CP's posts hurt anyone? It just bothers me how vicious some people are about this. I have seen my son behave in much the same way as CP is acting. 
Adults tend to be forgiving because they think he is a precocious child. His peers react pretty much the way people on this BB are. People say they wouldn't hold CP's disability against her as her behavior and style of communication they have an issue with. They can be one and the same in my experience. People don't understand that it is possible to be intellectually bright and socially clueless. I don't mean they wear the wrong outfit to the party. I mean they completely lack the ability to anticipate how people might react to them or even to see a social disaster when it unfolds right in front of them. They often don't understand the unwritten rules of behavior. It is a subtle and insidious disease for which there is no easy fix. There is no cure for autism. And so we have gotten to the gem we can take from all of this. And that is, it's not the content of what I communicate being autistic. It's the way in which I communicate it that is upsetting this courthouse grapevine rogue group of Florida bar members and law clerks in and out of Florida and the courthouse employees. Palisades Advance says, I'm going to add my voice to NHWRMB's pleas to have a little compassion. It's becoming more and more apparent that the original poster, that's me, CP, simply communicates in a different way than most of us do. You can underline that. You may not like it, and you're certainly free to say so, but it would also be nice if people were able to exercise a little restraint. Pointing to the fact that people have accepted Carol Ames' disability doesn't give the community carte blanche to attack other posters. CP, that's me, clearly doesn't communicate the way that Carol does. And that doesn't mean she isn't disabled or doesn't deserve some amount of compassion as well. It seems like a lot of people have decided that the whole chance to fight with someone who really annoys them, regardless of a potential disability that causes that annoyance, is too good to pass up. Frankly, I find that sad. And so the gem that you can take from all of this, and that's why I did my video of yesterday on the courthouse grapevine, is because there are groups of these licensed Florida bar lawyers. The poster in the video yesterday even came, she was a clerk in a federal U.S. courthouse, so... And law clerks for these judges in and out of the courthouse and courthouse employees. The video yesterday talked about how they have a courthouse grapevine gossiping about people, lawyers, litigants that they perceive as misleading them or who they misunderstand or who are odd or who are weird somehow annoy them in some way. A person, a litigant, a lawyer in a court who annoys them in some way. And today's video demonstrates that by the attacks on me and the comments made, and these being people who are in that courthouse grapevine, because one of them admits he's a licensed lawyer, and another one threatens me with Rule 11 sanctions. Those are lawyers and judges. And they're in the state of Florida. And they admit they stalked me to this internet forum, in both of the internet forums I referenced uh, in this video, that they stalked me there. They're stalking me there. Why? Because they first encountered me in one of the cases I filed, being an autistic litigant. So I'm there just trying to enjoy my special interest, my autistic special interest with horses and ponies, and they stalk me there. And since this is a critical mass of the group of the neurotypical attitudes, attitudinal barriers and the ableist attitudes that are existing in these courts where I'm actually filing cases and they're saying all these kinds of comments where they don't think autism is real and that I ain't misbehaving, it's my autism, so they're not understanding autism. And then they're asking questions that shows they don't understand what it means to be autistic. And then they're trying to talk about other disabilities and liken that 
to, well, doesn't someone with autism, can't they do that? Well, no, they can't. And then they're not understanding that there are adults with autism. They think it's only children. And this is going on and on, and they have to be responded to by other posters on this internet forum who do know something about autism, who have experience with an autistic child, who are disabled, who are saying, wait a minute, you you guys don't understand being autistic, and you really need to. And so they may say, well, you know, we just encountered this person on this internet forum, and she's annoying because she's autistic. Well, that is exactly identical to what happens to me as an autistic person anytime I go into any state or federal court within the state of Florida or to bar examiners in Florida or California or to any court in the state of California. This is identical to what happens to me. And I'm trying to just get my words out. I'm autistic. I'm literal. I can't read the social uh, communication going on. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to to follow these social cues that I don't understand and I don't have the timing. And then they're perceiving me as being annoying. And so they want to attack me. And then they want to threaten Rule 11 sanctions against me. And, and, and they carry through on these threats. And all because I'm autistic. And at the same time, I'll put this in another video. I have a public records request from the Florida Supreme Court itself. And it says as of around 2021, no, they've never given any autism spectrum awareness educational training to any of the judges in Florida. And so this is just they're failing autism. It's an untenable situation. And I'm just being who I am, authentically autistic. I have a different brain. I'm autistic. I'm not trying to make anyone mad at me. I'm just trying to get my facts out. And I'm just trying to get um, compensation for injuries done to me. It's not free money. Somebody injured me and took something away from me. Property, money, they injured my body. They took land from me. They won't pay me for work I did. I'm just trying to go in and get justice and a remedy just like anyone else. But then I'm being singled out because I'm autistic. And then they're you, they're going ex parte off out of the courthouse through this courthouse grapevine. They're communicating this ex parte information into my cases. It goes into the outcome of the decision where they are making me lose all my cases. And let's just say it. If they're posting on internet forums, they don't think autism is real. Then right at the outset of every one of my cases where I say I'm autistic, they are deciding that I'm not credible and I'm a liar and dishonest because autism isn't real. And it carries through the whole case. And that's why I lose my cases. And it's because they lack autism educational training. The lack of autism educational training of all these Florida judges, all their law clerks, all the courthouse personnel, all Florida bar members, it is causing the loss of my cases. And these and many, I don't know a case I filed that isn't valid and meritorious. I've even taken the advice of licensed Florida bar members sheriffs, disability organizations that I have valid claims and I go in and they tell me it's frivolous and it's vexatious and then they're also putting an article on the Florida State Courts that describes sensory impairments of autism saying those are vexatious litigants and then you have the Florida Supreme Court ruling that my autism diagnosis itself is vexatious and abuses the court system. Well, there's real problems. There's real problems in the Florida's court system with all this. And it's really clear that they're profiling autism. They're annoyed by autistic people. They don't care if they have valid claims or anything. They want to put them on an autism 
segregation vexatious list for their lifetimes and deny them access to the courts. And the Chief Justice of the Florida Supreme Court wants to expand this list. And this is patently unconstitutional. You're singling out a minority class of people like me who is autistic. And, you, and they're not even investigating or reviewing what happens to a person victimized by this as a result. I can't even get a protective order against associates of the person who violently raped me to protect myself in Florida because they won't allow me access to the courts. And they gave out my address in violation of my victim witness rights. Every case I've been in in the state of Florida has given out my address or my email. And as I will discuss in my video of tomorrow, a law clerk assigned to one of my cases admitted giving out my address and said, well, the court didn't say I couldn't do it. So anyway, this is more of what's going on in Florida you know, I can't say if this is going on with autistic people and autism families in other states. Um, but you can't say that autistic people are not trying to become lawyers or don't get involved in court systems. So, you know, autism is now uh, at least one in every 36 people in the United States. So this is just like failing autism is the issue of our times, and it's very unacceptable, and this needs to change. So if you liked my video, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscription button and ring the bell, and you'll be notified of my future videos.